the Lord God Almighty. Make his path God of Abraham, God of Isaac, and God of Israel. Make straight his path in the wilderness. Your name is Jehovah. Your name is Jesus Christ. Your name is Holy Spirit. Let his light shine. Let his light shine in the darkness. My love and greetings to each and every one of you in the precious name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The grace and the love and the peace of Jesus Christ rest upon each one of you today. Amen. My name is David Turner, and I want to welcome you to this week's program, The Gospel is the Power. This week, God has placed upon my heart a message that I believe will be highly encouraging to each and every one of you. It is entitled, Jesus Heals Your Broken Heart. Amen? Jesus wants to heal each and every one of you of your broken heart. The key verse I want to share is from the book of Psalm 147, verse 3. It says that Jesus came to bind up the wounds and heal the broken hearts of his people. Amen? You know, brokenness, the definition of brokenness means to be overcome by grief and despair. And our heart is symbolic of our intellectual mind, the moral and emotional function of one's inner being. So Jesus, when we're overcome by grief and despair, wants to come into your life and heal that broken heart. Amen? Hallelujah. The first thing I want to share with you is that Jesus wants to heal your broken heart due to your marriage and your family issues. So many people wherever I go are hurting so badly because they have the broken marriages and they either come from or they have the broken families. It's epidemic everywhere. But Jesus wants to heal each and every one of you today. Jesus wants to comfort you. The Bible says that he is the God of comfort, the Father of all comfort. 2 Corinthians chapter 1, verse 3. And he says, comfort, yes, comfort to my people. In Isaiah 40, verse 1. He's the Lord who comforts you. So through all the marriage and the family problems, Jesus wants to comfort you with this encouragement today. You see, the Bible says that in Hebrews 13, verse 4, that above all things, that marriage is most honorable. Proverbs 18, it says, He who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. We also see in the book of Malachi, chapter 2, verse 14 to 16, it says that God is the covenant witness to our marriage. And finally, we see in the book of Ephesians, chapter 5, verse 31, and the book of Genesis, chapter 2, verse 25, in verse 24, it says that, that a man shall leave his mother and a woman leave her home, and the two shall cleave together and become one flesh. What God has joined together, no man shall separate. So in all your affliction, Isaiah 63, verse 9, it says that God is afflicted. He's also in pain due to the separation, due to the family problems and the marriage and the divorce. God is for marriage. And I want to tell you today that the only way in these troubled times we can say together is if we stop looking towards each other and look to see if our needs are, needs are being met. And we have to look to the word of God and the promises of God and stand in faith in Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Ecclesiastes chapter 4, verse 12, that a threefold cord is not easily broken. One can be overcome. Two, it's a little tougher, but that threefold cord. Child of God, the threefold cord 
is you, your spouse, and Jesus Christ. Amen? We have to look unto Jesus and we have to follow what the Bible says in the book of Ephesians. We have to be like Jesus. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 25 and verse 22 and 23, what he says to the husband and wife, how they are to be to each other. We must fight to keep our marriages together and honor God and honor our spouses. Amen? Because the destruction from divorce, when God says, he says, I hate divorce. In the book of Malachi, Chapter 2, verse 16, I believe. He says, I hate divorce. Why does he hate it? Because he sees the destruction that carries on for the generations. But it doesn't mean if you've been through a divorce that he hates divorced people. He doesn't want to see you going through the very pain and suffering you are. For he died that you might be healed of that broken heart. Let us look unto the lives of Abraham, Sarah, and Hagar. You see, Sarah had told Abraham to go have the child with Hagar. They tried in the natural to fulfill God's promise. How many times do you know when God gives us a promise, we have to wait and allow him to fulfill that promise. When we try to do it on our own, we usually mess things up. So now we see that Hagar, that Sarah wanted her to be sent away. And Abraham was upset, but he Hearken, because God said, hearken to your wife, Sarah. Listen to her. Rectify the mistake since you listened to her in the first place to try to fulfill the promise. So Abraham sent Hagar out into the wilderness and he gave her food and water and sent her away. But before long, Hagar was out in the wilderness and the food and the water, all of her provision was gone. You know, whenever we rely on a man for our provision, it always runs dry. But you see, when we rely on Jesus Christ for our provision, His provision never ends. Amen? The Bible says in the book of Philippians chapter 4, verse 19, that He will supply all of your needs according to His riches and glory. Amen? Ephesians 3.20 says, Exceedingly and abundantly, He will do more than you ask or imagine. So we can't rely on the man. On the natural provision, we must rely on Jesus Christ and the provision from the kingdom of God. He is the manna from up above. Amen? So her provision ran out, Hagar. And she sat down upon a rock. She put her child, Ishmael, a hundred yards away and turned. She couldn't bear to look at him because she knew he'd die and she didn't want to watch. She began to lament and cry. Lamentations chapter 2, verse 19, the Bible says that we must lament and cry for our children. We must cry out before God. Be praying every day and crying out to God for the children in your life. Amen? For the strength of your families that God might hold them together, even against the attack of the enemy. Amen? She was crying. She was in such a deadly situation. Life or death. Many of you, you may be in a life or death situation. You may have a child in a life or death situation and you're crying out. But we must not fear. You see, God, even in the deadliest situation, the Bible says in Deuteronomy chapter 32, verse 39 to 41, it's, God says, I can wound you. I can heal you. I can kill you. I can let you live. So no matter what, God is in control of your circumstance. And the good news is that Jesus said, John 14, verse 19, as I live, you also live. So the good news is the God of heaven and earth wants you, wants your child, wants your family to live. He wants your marriage to live. Amen? He is for you, not against you. Hallelujah. Hagar was sitting there crying, and the angel of the Lord came and said, Hagar, what aileth thee? Means... Why are you crying? What is the problem? God is asking you today, child of God, what is your problem? Why are you crying so hard? What is it that you're feeling despair and hopelessness because you're looking under the circumstance and you're not looking unto the kingdom of God? Immediately the angel of the Lord 
had Hagar look up and she saw the streams of living water. I encourage you today, look up, child of God. Look unto the living water. Look unto the hills. The Bible says, Psalm 121, verse 1 and 2, I lift my eyes unto the hills. Who and where does my help come from? It comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. When you look up, you will see the streams of living waters. Jesus Christ, Isaiah 12, verse 3, He is the well of salvation. And He can, when you draw from the well of the strength and the power and the love and the mercy of Jesus Christ, you will be flowing with hope. You will be flowing with peace. You will be flowing with the righteousness of God. And your situation will be transformed in your life. Look up and look unto the rivers of living water, whose name is Jesus Christ. Amen. Jesus said, He said, Come, those who are thirsty, and you will drink. John 7, verse 37 and 38. Book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 6. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. They will be filled. Hagar was looking for the natural water. And the angel of the Lord pointed the way and she was able to see. See your way clear and receive life instead of the death that was imminent. But we are not just natural children. We are the spiritual children of God. Amen? So we must look for the spiritual water that we can drink. The Holy Spirit, the living water of God. Hallelujah. You see, Hagar, she had been sent away by Abraham. Maybe many people, many of you watching, there may be single moms, people whose husbands have left them, and vice versa. But the Bible says, Isaiah chapter 54, verse 5, says that God is your husband, your maker. Rely upon him. Abraham left Hagar on her own. But God will never leave you on your own. Even if in your natural situation in your family, your spouse, your husband, wife has left you on your own. If your mother and father has left you, the Bible says, Isaiah 49, verse 15 and 16, even if your mother and father forget you, God says, I'll never forget you. I've written your name upon the palm of my hand. Child of God, instead of turning to the natural, the person to fulfill your needs, Turn to the living God whose name is Jesus Christ. For He is the one who died to take away your sorrows and to heal your broken heart. Amen. You know, Abraham may have left her, but God says, Hebrews 13, 5, Neither will I leave you, nor will I forsake you. Not only did God give her the water so she had the natural help, but He also gave her a promise for the coming generations. For He said that, Ishmael would be a great nation. So he gave her beyond what she had even asked, not only the natural provision, but for an inheritance for the generations. God not only wants to meet the natural needs that you may be crying out for, but he wants to give you an inheritance. He's the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob. What does that mean? It means he's the God of generations. And he wants to touch not only you, but the generations. He wants your family to stay together because he can see he's the God who declares the end from the beginning. In Isaiah 46.10 it tells us it's because he can see the generations to come and the impact that you can have upon your generation by coming in the name of Jesus Christ and restoring your family with the peace of God. And it'll affect the generations to come. Amen? Precious child of God, Hagar, she saw the promise of God and she said in Genesis 16, verse 13, she said, you are El Roy means the God who sees. The same way that God Almighty sent his angel because he saw the problem for Hagar and for Ishmael is the same God who sees your problems today. He knows the hurt in your family. Put your trust in him. Isaiah 58 verse 12, he is the restorer and the repairer of the breach. There's nothing he can't do. I tell you today, if you will put your trust fully, your family, bring them in prayer before the throne room of Jesus Christ. The Bible says, Hebrews 4, 16, we can come boldly before the throne of grace and mercy. Oh God, this is your family. God, would you protect them? Would you help them? Send your angel ministering spirits, bring us together with a supernatural peace. Watch over us and keep us from the enemy. Pray 
for your family, for your marriages. Believe God. And the same God of Hagar who sees your issue in your family, he's the God who can not only meet those needs in this temporary time and in this generation, but he will give you the promise for generations to come. Amen? Hallelujah. This is the hope we have because Jesus died to heal your broken heart and the brokenness in your family. Amen? Hallelujah. Good evening. It's Tom Call. I hope you're doing really well. David, um, uh, Nancy Logsdon, you were kind enough to come by and pray with Nancy and John and Elizabeth and myself uh, a couple of months ago. Um, Nancy was back in town. I saw her yesterday, and um, she found out yesterday that she's cancer-free. And uh, that is not a surprise. But wow, is that terrific. It just stopped me dead in my tracks when I, when I heard it. So um, I wanted you to know and to thank you for your participation and for letting God use you. Um, you've, had a, you've had a tremendous impact. And I just wanted to call and say thank you. Uh, thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, precious people of God. That's a real message that I received this morning from somebody that I prayed for several months ago, and Jesus Christ touched this person and healed him of cancer. You have to make the connection. The same miracle that Jesus Christ did. I never knew this woman. This man invited me to pray. It was his neighbor. The same thing Jesus Christ will do for you. Be encouraged. Don't give up. Don't look to the answers of the world. Look for the answer of heaven, Jesus Christ, who can give you the miracle. God bless you. Hallelujah. You know, many times we have the people who come around us and they provoke us and they aggravate us. But I want to tell you today, child of God, if you've got, you've got good news today because if you've got people who are provoking you, and who are aggravating you, or maybe I'm the only one, but the good news is that Jesus Christ, he came to heal your broken heart when people are coming against you. Amen? You know, the Bible tells us, Psalm 113, verse 9, in Deuteronomy chapter 7, verse 14, and also Exodus, I believe chapter 23, verse 24, and 25, and 26, tells us that God said there would be no barrenness. But we see in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 1, verse 6, and verse 12 to 20, we see that there is a man. His name is Elkanah. He has two wives, Hannah and Peninnah. Now, Hannah was barren, and Peninnah was able to have children. They were sisters. And so because she could have children, she was constantly provoking Hannah. And it wasn't bad enough for Hannah. She felt devastated that she couldn't have children. But then on top of that, to be provoked by her sister who was able to have many children. It affected her so badly that she went to the temple and she was laying there just crying out before God and just crying and crying, pouring out her heart. And she remembered the promises of God that he promised there would be no barrenness. But yet she was barren. She cried so hard that the, the priest, whose name was Eli, he came and he saw her and he thought she was drinking early in the day. But she said no. And she told him her problem and why she was crying out. And Eli said, may the Lord grant you re your request. And sent her home. And she went and you know, God opened her womb, healed her barrenness, and she was able to have a child. Not only did God give her a child, but gave her Samuel the prophet. And the Bible tells us in the book of 1 Samuel, chapter 2, verse 21, it says that he grew up in the presence of the Lord. 1 Samuel 2, 26, it says that he had favor before men and God 
In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 3, 19, it says that not one word he spoke fell to the ground. So she not only got a son, but an amazing prophet of God who was able to affect the generations and bring glory to the name of God Almighty Jesus Christ. And not only that, but she was able to have five more children. God blessed her exceedingly and abundantly. Precious child of God. She cried out before the throne of God. I encourage you today to cry before the throne of God when people are provoking you and coming against you. God will hear your cry. You know, faith, I always say, moves mountains. But when we cry out, our tears move the heart of the maker of heaven and earth. Amen. Jesus came. To wipe away the tears, Isaiah 25, verse 8, from the face of his people. He wants to wipe away your tears when you cry out to him. Amen? Many people like Hannah may be provoking you and coming against you, but I tell you, God is a defender. You know, he will restore you. The Bible says, prophetically, I speak this into your life today. Zephaniah, chapter 3, verse 17 to 20. The Bible says, the Lord your God, He is mighty to save. He takes great delight in you. He rejoices over you with singing. Amen? He goes on to say that the sorrows for the appointed feast, He's going to remove from you. But He's going to deal with all your enemies and bring you home and give you praise and honor. He's going to remove all that. And He's going to restore what you've lost before your very eyes, says the Lord Almighty. Amen? This is the hope we have today, the God of Hannah. When she cried out because she was being persecuted and the oppression was against her and she was being put to shame. God, the Bible says, Zechariah chapter 9, verse 12, return to the stronghold, you prisoners of hope, for even today, declares the Lord, I will return to you double. I tell you, precious child of God, you put your trust in Jesus Christ, you lift your eyes unto him, and he's going to remove your shame. He's going to set a table, the Bible says, Psalm 23, in the presence of your enemies, and he's going to restore your life and bless you. I tell you, the God of Hagar who restored her family and gave her the inheritance, the God of Hannah who gave her the hope for the future generations and an inheritance by giving her the children and opening her womb, The same God will remove your shame when people are provoking you and people are coming against you. And he is going to bless you in your life. And he's going to heal your broken heart because of the challenges that you're going through. Amen? Hallelujah. This is the great hope of the gospel. The great hope that we have in Jesus Christ. Because of his birth, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ, we are able... To have Jesus who heals our broken hearts. Amen. Hallelujah. We're going to be right back that we can come and pray together. But before we do, watch this testimony of our living God, whose name is Jesus Christ. Well, the uh, last couple of years, my wife and I have uh, been battling a uh, drug addiction to prescription drugs and we both came here tonight expecting the Lord to uh, heal us and I can't speak for her but I have no more cravings they're all gone hallelujah thank you Jesus from this day the mind of Jesus Christ be upon you we're gonna wait on the Lord he's gonna pour out a gift he's already given you one but this is your day for his glory and power There's a gift, power of God, right now is filling you with the gift of the discerning of spirits. You will be like a battle axe in the kingdom of God. The fire of God right now be upon you, opening and giving you the mind of Jesus and the discernment of spirits, the wisdom of God. Fire of God be upon you. Rejoice, rejoice, for thus says the Lord of hosts, I have renewed you, I have bought you, and I will use you for my glory. In the name of Jesus, amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. You can, you can feel the power of God all over you.
all over my body. All right over. Now. Right now. He's, he's from head to toe everywhere. Hallelujah. God is good. Let's pray together right now. Believing for your family and the situations in your life. Lord Jesus Christ, God Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, God of Abraham, God of Isaac, God of Israel. You are the God of the generations and you love and you honor the families. Lord Jesus Christ, right now, I pray for every person listening who has the broken heart because of the marriages that are dissolved, the marriages that are in trouble and having problems. We pray right now for those who are having problems with their children and extended family. In the name of Jesus Christ, the peace, Jehovah Shalom, of God, pour out upon them right now. Let them walk in your peace from this day in the name of Jesus and put down their swords and come together in unity. Oh God, every contentious spirit, every spirit that is breaking them apart, every demonic spirit, every spirit of hatred and rebellion and witchcraft, I cast out of their lives in the name of Jesus Christ. I speak the love of God and the mercy of Jesus Christ to enter into their home. Every dear mother and grandmother that's crying out and every person crying out for their children, God, hear their prayers as they lament and meet their need. In the name of Jesus, I break every addiction off of the lives of the family. I speak the transformation off of the, the challenges, the spirits of alcoholism and drug addictions. In the name of Jesus, oh God, that which the enemy has come and torn away, I speak the restoration of the kingdom of God over their lives. Bring the hope, per Romans 5.5, 5, into their lives. In the name of Jesus Christ, bring them together in unity. In the name of Jesus, I heal the them and set them free. Right now, God, turn the hearts of the children to the parents in the name of Jesus. Oh God, all the darkness, you turn to light. God, even though they've been in a state of mourning for Psalm 30, verse 11, let them be in a time of dancing and rejoicing as they come back together. All the families be healed. Lord Jesus Christ, let there be peace. All those that are being attacked because of legal cases and people putting the false cases and people coming against them wrongfully when they're being provoked. In the name of Jesus Christ, I speak the freedom right now, the power of God for every person in the right to be lifted up, Lord Jesus Christ. Christ. God set them free from the attack and the oppression of the enemy in the name of Jesus. Oh God, heal their broken hearts from the frustration in all the situations. Be with them and bless them. Surround them and protect them with your love. Let them see the hand of the Lord upon their lives. Send your angels and ministering spirits. Be with them and bless them. In the mighty name of Jesus Christ, we pray and we bless. Amen. Hallelujah. Blessed be the name of the Lord. May you be encouraged this week. I would love to hear how your family is doing. If you have a praise report, if you want us to pray for you, you call us, you email us, let us know. We will truly be praying for you, individually and corporately. So many people call us, they're surprised. We actually call them back and we pray for them. And we're believing and standing with you in the kingdom of God for the glory and the promise of heaven, Jesus Christ, to manifest in your life. Amen. God bless you, and we'll see you next week on The Gospel is the Power. Make his path straight. Make straight his path there.